Hello everyone, welcome to our 21 days of prayer, and surprise, it's day 22, it's bonus day, you know, God's got blessings for us if we just kind of look for them, so I hope that you've enjoyed listening to our different team members and members of the body here at uh, Waypoint Sharing, from their lives and the written devotions that we've been going through from the Version Bible Plan, and today <clears throat> we're going to be looking at the last day. I want to let you know, devotions, daily, uh, daily quiet time with the Lord is one of the best things you could ever learn to do in your walk with God. So I want you to pick a time, a daily time that works for you. Kind of think of your schedule and find a time, morning, you know, afternoon, evening, what is going to work best for you. Pick a time and then you have to be intentional to make it a priority. God loves you, and he wants to walk with you every step of your life. And he will if you just learn to follow his leading and listen to his voice. The discipline of you getting into God's word and then getting God's word into you, hide it in your heart, then learn to memorize and meditate on those words because God will speak to you. He will use the resources that you put in your heart as you walk in your journey through life. And especially... Don't you want some help if a roaring lion comes to attack you? Because the devil will. He's going to try to attack you every single day. So I'm just saying, learn to spend time with God and walk with God. So that when the lion attacks, when he tempts you, you've got the sword of the Spirit at the ready. Right here in your heart. Right here in your mouth. And now you can use that sword of the Spirit and fend the devil off. And you know what? Not just fending off temptations. But as you go through your day, maybe you need some direction. The Lord might bring that very verse that you've memorized. Memorize some key verses. And, and, and as you go through life and you're wondering what to do, listen to his voice. He can speak to you in your heart. He can nudge you. He can lead you. He can uh, guide you. Um, he might correct you or he even might encourage you. Make a habit of living by the word of God through the power of his spirit. Okay, today's devotion, The Foundation by Danny Saavedra. Matthew 7, 24 through 29 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams arose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house, his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell down with a great big crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Why? Because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. See, most teachers, when they teach you something, they tend to be hypocrites. They want you to do it, but they're not doing it, and they're not doing it themselves. Jesus lived by the words that he taught, so you can too. So the devotion says, what do you need to successfully build a house? Well, you need the right materials, you need the right tools, you need the land to be right. But there's one thing that's the absolute most important. You need a good foundation. The art, One article explained that the foundation's primary purpose is to hold your house up. Uh, the foundation bears the load of everything that's built upon it. So without it, your house would quickly sink into the ground unevenly, resulting in cracks and damage to your house. A strong foundation resists movement. If your home is not anchored to a strong foundation, it may crack, break apart, or even be washed away by the natural forces at work. So, a sturdy foundation can resist any seasonal movement that happens below or around your house. Now, this is true of houses. It's also true of Lego towers. We got grandkids, let me tell you. But it's also true of your life. Um, so, what you have to do in today's passage, Jesus tells us, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. You see, friends... Our lives are like a building project, a house, if you will. And for humanity, there are only two paths. There's no other options. There's, only, there's no third path. Only one way to get into heaven. 
And either your life is going to be built on the foundation of Christ and his word, and it will stand the test of time and all the forces that throw themselves against it, or if you build your life on anything else and not properly on the word of God, well, eventually, through a storm, through an earthquake, through the attacks of the enemy, it is going to topple over. Now, I need to make sure that I stress this because it is of vital importance. This key detail makes the difference between life and death, between your house, your life house, standing or falling. You can build your house to resemble the words of Jesus. It can build, be built on right living, doing the right thing, right? Or you can see it flop over. Now, that's what the Pharisees did. They followed the letter of the law, and their lives looked righteous on the outside. They seemed perfectly constructed, but the foundation was not on God's word, was not on Christ. Instead, their foundation was on self, pride. Look at me. Folks, that exterior of religiosity is, is not going to work. It's work-based, and they're trying to earn their way into the kingdom. This kind of house, Jesus said, is built on sand. And one single gust of wind sometimes is enough to topple it over. That single gust of wind might be a little sin. And so, you know, it's just it's going to fall apart. That's, that's not what you want. To get into the kingdom, we have to receive an invitation by Jesus. Good news is he's invited all of us. And that invitation is to all who receive him, to all who walk with him. And when we do, when we build our lives firmly on him and his word, the apostle tells us your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thanksgiving. Build your house on the sand, do what you want, get ruined, or build your house on the foundation. You know, it takes more work to do it right, but it is worth it, my friends. Listen, God wants you to overcome all the attacks of the enemy and invites you to join him forever. Build your life on the rock. And I don't know about you, but uh, I just know I need help. Let's ask for him to help us today. Father, thank you for the power and the truth of your word that can set us free from deceptions and all of the things that Satan throws at us, from all the storms, from all the attacks of the enemy, from the little termites that want to try to undermine. Whatever it is that Satan throws at us, your word is enough to keep us standing. So my friends, I just pray that you would help us, God, stand against all of the attacks of the, of the enemy. And through the power of your spirit, through the power of your word, Father, having done all to stand, may we stand strong, firm until the end. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Let's live in victory.